Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another Guides, Tips, and Tricks video. This time we're going to be talking about the mechanics of the air game in Civilization V. Um, quick disclaimer, these videos are primarily intended for a multiplayer audience using the No Quitters rule set. That means the information I'm going to be uh, sharing with you guys is geared towards that audience. Um, this is a mechanic-oriented video though, so a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about is going to be useful for everybody playing Civ 5. It's just that's my kind of primary audience in mind. Um, one other disclaimer, I am using um, two mods. I'm using a interface mod, which doesn't really have anything to do with this at all, but I thought I'd get it out there. And I'm also using a um, No Quitters Balance uh, mod, which is the it's a multiplayer mod that we use uh, when playing in the No Quitters group that makes the multiplayer game just a little bit better. There are a couple differences primarily in things like promotions and the modded game versus the base game. If we get to any of those points uh, where there's differences in the base game and the modded game, I'll try to take a moment to explain those differences so that the information can be used for both um, people playing the base game and the modded game, but be aware I am uh, referencing a modded game. All right, disclaimer is out of the way. Let's dive into it. I'm going to break this down into um, offense and defense for the air game. Um, we're going to start with the offense. It's the simpler of the two components, and there's uh, less units and less complexity there, so it'll be a good place to start. Um, there are three offensive air units in the game. Um, kind of. We're not going to count nuclear missiles and A-bombs in here yet. Um, and these are the, tri uh, the, the Great War Bomber, the Bomber, and the Stealth Bomber. Uh, we'll start with the Great War Bomber. Um, Great War Bomber is a uh, 50 combat strength uh, unit. It can only be based out of uh, cities or carriers, and it has starting six range, which means it can attack six tiles away from its based location. So if you're in a carrier, that gives you a little bit more mobility because you can move the carrier on your turn and then still attack six tiles from the carrier. If you're in a city, um, you can only attack six tiles from that city. You can see the radius that it can attack by hitting the S key, which is a hotkey for, I think it's hotkey for airstrike, I think is what it is, airstrike mode, apparently. It's S, but that's the hotkey, and it will give you a nice little visual representation of where you can attack with that unit. Um, all right. Uh, the promotions, the offensive promotions for bombers are kind of interesting. Um, unlike regular promotions, which are 15 combat strength promotions, or maybe if you're really lucky, something like siege promotion, a really specific promotion like that, um, the promotions for a bomber are broken down um, into starting two categories. You can either promote um, anti-land or anti-city. And the promotions are 33 combat strength each, which means by the time you get three of them, you're basically at 100% uh, extra combat strength, which means the, the specialization of air units is pretty important for their damage. Um, there are secondary specializations you can take after you get that first tier of either uh, land or city bombers. You can then choose to promote further into anti-tank or anti-naval uh, bombers. Um, and those, again, offer the nice damage increases, but there are some downsides of that that we'll get to in a moment. All right, so uh, Great War Bomber, 50 combat strength, range 6. Bomber, uh, it's the next level up, which is the upgrade. Actually, the Great War Bomber upgrades into the bomber. Um, this is a combat strength 65, range 10 unit. And then the Stealth Bomber, which uh, the bomber actually upgrades into. Um, Great War Bombers and bombers take oil. The Stealth Bomber takes aluminum. And the Stealth Bomber upgrades to a 85 combat strength unit with 20 range. Um, the Stealth Bomber also has an ability unique to the Bomber class called, um, well, unique to the Stealth Bomber in the Bomber chain, it's in, all the fighters have it, called Recon, which gives sight six tiles away from uh, wherever that unit is based at the start of your turn. So if you have a carrier and you move the carrier with the fighter, you don't necessarily see further. Um, but if the carrier is there to start with, I believe is how that works, and it's definitely how that works in cities. If you if you move it there, you don't get the sight till the start of the next turn. Um, but it gives you six tiles, six, six, uh, tiles of sight and a radius around where that, that unit is located. All right, um, so those are the three units. It's pretty simple for attacking with them. We just talked about that already. It's S and you click on the target you want to attack and it's pretty simple to get the actual attack going. However, some of you may have noticed that when you go to use your bombers, sometimes your bombers just blow up and it's really annoying and you don't know really why your bombers are blowing up and you don't understand quite what you can do about it. Um, we're gonna get to that. Uh, we're gonna work through promotions quickly first. Um, the most important promotion to get on bombers is air repair. It is extremely, extremely powerful. This means that even if you attack, it's it's basically the equivalent of march, but on uh, on bombers. It gives you a, a heal every single turn, even if you've attacked. And since they have to be based out of 
cities or carriers, if they're in a city, they're going to get that uh, the healing of in your own borders and the healing of in your city, which is pretty powerful. Um, I actually think they only heal for 20, but it might be 25. If it's a regular unit in your city, it heals for 25. And if bombers have no special rules, it should be healing for 25 when in your city as well. Um, additionally, if you put a unit with um, double medic promotion next to a stack of bombers, so if you have medic 1 and medic 2, that adds an additional 10 points of healing per turn, which means that uh, bombers with air repair can take a lot of damage every single turn and still heal up to nearly full uh, on each attack, which is extremely important. Um, air repair is available in the base game. It's available after two levels of either bombardment or two levels of siege. So uh, when you're prompted, if you pick up two siege promotions or two anti-land promotions, um, you can then get air repair as your third promotion. Um, in the modded game, that has been moved back, so it requires three levels of bombardment or three levels of siege. Um, this is a little bit annoying. Not, not so much the moving back in the mod, but just the, the way that's coded, that you can't really pick up naval um, specializations or anti-tank specializations without losing your ability to get air repair. You have to go all the way to air repair first and then come back. Because if you go one point in bombardment and one point in naval promotions, although that's two promotions, the third promotion is not the third promotion is not available then as air repair, right? Your third promotion would either have to be another point in naval or another point in bombardment or something else. You can't go to uh, air repair there. And you really need air repair to allow bombers to be effective because if you don't, what happens is you attack once, your bomber takes a bunch of damage because unlike regular ranged units, bombers are hit back when they, when they strike. So if I were to attack... Um, take my Great War Bomber here, if I were to attack this, this unit over here, I would take a big chunk of damage back to my bomber's hit points. Um, so if you want to be able to use your bombers each and every turn, which unlike other ranged units, they have to be able to heal, and you really need air repair for that. Um, so recommendations for promotions, I really recommend getting air repair as soon as possible. After you get air repair, you have a little bit more options in terms of what to go next. Generally, what you're going to want to do is finish the bombardment line, because if once you have three points of bombardment, you can then go get logistics, which allows you to attack twice, which is really, really important too. It makes your bombers very, very, very powerful. And then potentially um, evasion, and we'll talk about evasion a little bit later. Evasion is actually the only other decent ability on there. Um, sometimes in desperation, you can promote your, your units um, anti-naval. Um, for the specification of trying to deal with, for example, battleships, you may have to do that, but you're going to cost yourself air repair, which means it's going to be very difficult to use your bombers uh, turn in and turn out uh, without having to take some breaks. Um, and you can also get to air repair just using the siege promotions. You can go siege 1, siege 2, and then air repair in the base game, or siege 1, siege 2, siege 3, then air repair in the modded game, and uh, still get to air repair that way. Um, but the problem is that the 100% the combat bonus you get from the three levels of this is then applied only to cities and not to land units. And... Uh, Bombers are, tend to be an anti-land unit thing as opposed to an anti-city thing, although you can specialize that way. It's just the, the most useful one is almost always um, bombardment itself. All right, so talked about bombers a little bit. Let's, let's switch sides here and talk about the defense. Oh, well, actually, one last thing before we do that. Um, bombers can be moved from city to city or city to carrier or carrier to city, and they have a rebase range that is twice their regular range. So Great War Bombers can be rebased 12 tiles away, um, uh, regular bombers can be rebased 20 tiles away, and stealth bombers can be rebased, I believe, 40 tiles away, which means that they're pretty mobile. Um, all right, on to the defensive side of things. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe there are eight types, yeah, eight types of units that are designed to help you defend against air attacks. Um, and they are, in no particular order, the destroyer, the missile cruiser, the mobile SAM, the AA gun, in the mod, the giant death robot, uh, the triplane, the fighter, and the uh, jet fighter. All of these units have bonuses and abilities that allow them to help defend against air attacks. And we're going to walk through those briefly. Um, we're going to start with the ground-based ones. These are actually the simplest ones to talk about. Um, we'll start. We'll start with the. We'll do an order of availability. So, let's talk about the AA gun. This is the first one that's available, and that is available at uh, ballistics. Where you can get the anti-aircraft gun. Um, the AA gun is a 50 combat strength ground unit. It has two movement points. Um, None of that's all that interesting to begin with, but it has an ability called uh, Interception here, and another ability called Bonus versus Aircraft slash Helicopters. Both of these are really important. Interception basically means that when an air unit attacks inside a, a radius, and the radius is specific to the unit uh, that's doing the defending, um, this unit can attempt to intercept that air attack. 
Um, the 100 in the brackets after it is a percentage chance. So anything attacking within the AA guns, any air unit attacking within the AA guns radius is going to trigger um, the AA guns interception 100% of the time. Um, and when it intercepts, it gets a bonus because it gets a bonus versus aircraft and helicopters, and that bonus is 150%. Uh, well, it's a multiplier, right? So this means like like all the the combat bonuses in Civ, you add up the combat bonuses and then multiply by the base strength. So this is essentially 150% um, extra combat strength when it's uh, when it's fighting air units, which makes it very, very strong versus air units. All right, so AA guns available there. The next one uh, is the Mobile SAM, which is available at Rocketry. Um, this is an upgrade from the, from the AA gun. It gains one movement point and 15 combat strength. Um, has the same bonuses as interception 100 and 150% combat modifier versus air units, so also pretty strong. And then finally, there is the uh, for land units. There is the giant death robot. Um, this is mod only. Um, it has this bonus, and it's actually pretty poor. Um, it has a 50% interception chance versus air units, and no bonus versus them in terms of strength, which means that uh, it is a. I mean, it's it's a fairly high combat strength unit. Not that it ever sees any play, but if it were to see play, it is essentially 150% chance. 150%. Uh, no, 150%. It's a 150 combat strength unit with a 50% chance to intercept. And we're going to talk. Um, about that in just a moment, kind of how the interception works. Let's get through the units first, and then I'll break it down. All right, um, there are two naval units that have anti-air abilities. The first is the destroyer, available down here at um, combustion. Uh, destroyer is pretty weak anti-air unit. Um, it has interception 40, which means it only has a 40% chance to trigger versus uh, air units attacking in its radius. And the uh, the other thing is it has no bonuses, right? So it's only a 55 combat strength unit, and it has no bonuses versus uh, air units. So it's just 55 combat strength, unlike the uh, the Mobile Sam. Like, the Mobile Sam's going to end up being... Uh, let's see if I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, just if you just look at the base modifier and multiply it by the 150%, you're going to see something like uh, 120... Oh, 162, rather, combat strength. Out of, out of this unit when it's intercepting versus uh, air units. Um, the missile cruiser is a little bit better, uh, although much later in tech tree, it comes out at robotics, and the missile cruiser has a 100% chance to intercept and has 100 combat strength here. So it's a little bit better uh, when it comes to helping versus air. But it's still, it's only 100 combat strength compared to the 160 we already saw, the mobile SAM, or even even like 100, and I think it's about 112, 115 for the, a the AA gun. So these are going to just be stronger overall for interceptions than the... Um, than the, the, the sea-based interceptions from like the missile cruiser, the destroyer. All right, the third type of interception you can have um, are the air-based interceptions, and these are the triplanes, the fighters, and the uh, jet fighters. Uh, triplanes have a range of five, which means they're gonna intercept anything within a range of five tiles of them, but their intercept chance is only f uh, 50%. Um, so only, and we're going to talk about how that works in just a second, but basically this means this unit only has a 50% chance of actually intercepting a bomber coming through it. Um, however, it does get the 150% combat bonus to it, so this 35 becomes a lot more powerful, and it has a promotion line that you can pick up that actually make it stronger. So if you pick up in the interception promotion line on a triplane, you can do this three times. Uh, that's 100% combat strength, and then another 150% combat strength here, meaning that you're getting a 250% combat strength boost. So it's three and a half times um, this value is basically the value you're going to be getting uh, in terms of their, their effective strength versus intercept. So they're quite good versus um, enemy uh, air attacking units. Um, the, and same with the fighter. The fighter has those, those same bonuses, except the fighter is a pretty big upgrade um, because it goes from interception 50 to interception 100. Um, this one ha maintains the interception 50 because it's been promoted through the triplane into a fighter, I, but it, it uses the better of the two, so it keeps it has interception 100, which means 100% of the time that an air unit attacks inside of the range of this fighter, it will intercept. Um, and then finally, there is the jet fighter, which is extremely powerful at 75 combat strength, also 100% chance to intercept, and also has the availability of the interception line. Um, a triple promoted triplane, um, if, if it's triple interception promoted, will one-shot a bomber. Even a bomber attacking an extremely weak unit like a, uh, like, a, like a worker, if a bomber is bombing, like a full bomber too, not even a great war bomber, if a full bomber is bombing uh, a unit that is protected by a triple interception promoted triplane, the, the bomber, even a, even a weak unit like a worker, the bomber is going to get one-shot by the, the power of that interception. 
All right, let's talk a little bit about um, interception in general, and then we're going to talk about a couple quirks, um, unit-specific quirks that are going on here. Interception is kind of annoying. Um, because even if you have multiple interceptions, let's say I had, let's say this, let's just pretend this was nine fighters here, right? And they have a bomber attacking into a territory controlled by these fighters. And it would depend on what, what unit, um, what level of fighter they are, if they're a triplane, a fighter, or a jet fighter. Um, the triplane defends up to five tiles around the area it's in. So anything within, if a bomber attacking a unit anywhere in five tiles of uh, this triplane, the triplane would then have a 50% chance to intercept. Fighters have a, uh, eight tile range with a hundred percent chance to intercept and jet fighters have a ten tile range with a hundred percent chance to intercept so that would be the radius that they defended in um, naval units and land-based units have a two tile radius for intercept so anywhere within two tiles of this giant death robot or two tiles of this destroyer or two tiles of this missile cruiser these units will attempt to will intercept those in that area or attempt to in the case of the ones that are less than a hundred percent the way it works, though, is you can't have two un you can't have two defensive units intercepting the same attack. So let's say a bomber attacks this tile. Let's say I had a unit. Let's say I threw this guy in the water, and uh, a bomber is attacking this guy on this tile. There are a lot of things in ra uh, radius here. The destroyer is in range of it. The missile cruisers and the destroyer and the missile cruiser are each within two tiles of it. The AA guns within two tiles of it. Um, giant death robots out of range. The triplane and all the fighters and the jet fighter are also in range of this. However, what happens is the game assigns one defender to each attacker. So that bomber comes in, and it's not like all nine of my fighters go kill that bomber, for example. One of these units is chosen, and it's either at random or based on uh, the order in which the units were created, and I'm not entirely sure which it is. But for all intents and purposes, when you're playing against other players or even against the AI, you're not going to know the order the units are created in, so it may as well be random. One of those units is randomly assigned to, to be the guy doing the intercepting. And let's say the destroyer is assigned to do the intercepting. Well, the destroyer only has a 40% chance. So that means 60% of the time that, that the destroyer is chosen the destroyer doesn't actually intercept. So they might be able to just bomb this with impunity for the first bombing run because the destroyer was chosen as the defending the defending unit, which is pretty annoying. Um, same with triplanes. Triplanes are the same way. You might be very, very frustrated with the performance of your triplanes because each triplane only has a 50% chance. And that 50% chance is not per bomber, it's per turn. So if my the first bomber that I use to attack over this way, let's, let's, let's even simplify the example. Let's say that this mobile SAM was in the water right here, and the, the um, Arabian player was trying to bomb a unit here. The only, and these guys, let's say these fighters were not on intercept at all, so the only unit available to, to protect that is the destroyer. Well, the first bomber uh, bombs it, and they, the, the Arabian player notices that the destroyer didn't intercept. There was no damage dealt to his bomber from the destroyer. There was no interception message. So what happens? He can bomb with impunity there with the rest of his bombers for the rest of the turn. Because what he knows is that the destroyer is not a 40% chance per bombing run. It's a 40% chance per turn. And on the first and then on the first bombing attempt, it was clear the destroyer did not make his roll for that turn. So it's something to be aware of. And triplanes are the same way. Um, if your opponent only has one triplane and your first bomber goes through and is not intercepted by that triplane and it's and he had it on intercept, then it's because it failed its 50% roll for the turn. Now in simultaneous play, you can get run into these kind of annoying scenarios where intercepts are turned on midway through the turn. And this is going to be a bit of a problem because you get less surety then in terms of that you're actually sure they don't have any intercepts left because they can turn an intercept on in the middle of the turn, which means that suddenly a place that didn't have intercept, didn't have protection from bombing now has protection from bombing. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. All right, let's hope we didn't get too confused with the minutiae there because it does get a little bit annoying how those interactions come together. Um, but basically what happens is you need to deal with each and every intercept before you can bomb without with impunity, before you can bomb freely. And that means you need to uh, air sweep. And this is the mechanic for countering anti-air. Um, air sweep works like this. Um, you know those ranges we were just talking about on fighters? Only triplanes, fighters, and jet fighters can air sweep. And air sweep is based on the range that they have here. Um, there is a range promotion available on air units. And if you take the range promotion on triplanes, fighters, or jet fighters, it does extend their, their air sweep range by two, but not their air defense range by two. Go, go, Civ, right? More, more bizarre, like 
this arbitrary rules that are in there that you just have to memorize. Um, which means that a ranged promoted fighter still only protects 8 tiles, but it can remove enemy protection at up to 10 tiles. <laughs> Sorry, I wish that was easier. <laughs> um, but anyways, so how does it work? An air sweep is like this. Uh, whereas S is an attack, that's strike. Alt S is air sweep. Um, it doesn't give you the nice red bar barrier. Again, no one knows why it doesn't give you that, but it doesn't. And you're going to air sweep a position. So let's say that I wanted to attack um, this mechanized infantry from you, Lundy. We have um, a great war bomber with a ranged promotion, so he can reach it. He can reach to there. Um, and I want to attack it, but I don't want to be intercepted. And I don't want to be intercepted because I'm like likely going to lose the unit if it's intercepted. So I need to get rid of all the uh, anti-air units in play here. Um, we have good sight over here. Um, and we can see almost all the tiles around this unit, but we can't see these two tiles. And this would be a bit of a problem uh, in a real game. So let's talk about let's, let's talk about the scenario. We can see two mobile SAMs, that's two interceptions. We can see two fighters, that's two interceptions. Each of those interceptions are guaranteed 100%. So that's four interceptions at a minimum we have to get rid of. Um, and then there's potentially two more interceptions in here, maybe that we don't know about. Because for example, if a mobile SAM was sitting here or a mobile SAM was sitting here, that would be two more air, uh, units protecting this. So what we can do, to air, we, um, we have actually, what do we have? One, two, three, four, we have five, that's actually perfect. We have five uh, fighter units here. We're gonna start air sweeping this. And one, two, three, four, five. Um, we have a range of five. We're gonna promote dogfighting just for the sake of the example. Dogfighting is a bonus when air sweeping. We're going to air sweep here and see how nothing happened. We used our units out of moves, but we didn't get any notification in the center of our screen. What that means is that there was an intercept there. If there was no intercept there when you do an, when you do an air sweep, what would happen is you get a notification that says um, your fighter met with no resistance. All right, so that's the first air sweep. Since we air swept this position, we know we can't get rid of this mobile SAM's interception because this mobile SAM's interception is only two tiles wide, and that's outside of that, that's three tiles wide. But we could have gotten rid of either one of these fighters or the mobile SAM. And we wouldn't know ahead of time what would pick that up um, because the interception is assigned randomly to one of those four guys, right? Um, however, since we didn't take any damage, what we know happened is we picked up the mobile SAM. Interceptions made by uh, mobile SAMs, uh, by AA guns, by destroyers, by missile cruisers, and by giant death robots don't deal damage. Uh, all they do to, your, to a fighter doing it, right, um, when you're air sweeping. They don't deal damage to the air sweeping unit. All that would happen uh, in that case is their interception is removed until their next turn, and your fighter is out of actions until next turn. All right. But we got to get rid of the rest of these interceptions. So let's do that too. Let's take our next fighter and air sweep. Uh, we're going to air sweep a little bit closer. We're going to air sweep directly on the target we want to bomb since we have the range. The fighter didn't have the range or I would have done it there. All right. Also, out of actions, that means the other mobile SAM's uh, defensive uh, intercept was triggered. Let's take our next fighter, air sweep here. Uh, we'll promote for the sake of the example. Uh, go into dogfighting again. Okay. And now see how there was damage dealt to them and damage dealt to us. This is because we encountered a fighter intercepting. And when that happens, the fighters basically fight, is what just happens there. Um, we were triple promoted in for, for the benefit of being stronger in air sweeping, so we ended up doing more damage to the fighter than they did to us. The promotion interception, and I gotta thank Cole for talking about this to me, the promotion interception here is only a combat bonus in intercepting bombers, not intercepting fighters doing air sweeps. So that's gonna be pretty confusing, but that is why um, attacking air units with uh, the dogfighting promotion do more damage than defending air units with the interception promotion because the interception promotion is only a combat bonus versus bombers doing bombing runs. So if you notice, they took 60 damage and I think we took 20 damage or something very, very similar. All right, that's our third sweep. So we know that our third sweep has triggered and we triggered the two mobile SAMs and now we've triggered one of those fighters. We have another fighter we need to get rid of. So let's again, let's promote for dogfighting and let's run another air sweep here. And we hit that other fighter. So we know that those two fighters have now both been uh, used their, their interceptions for the term and both of the uh, uh, mobile SAMs. Interestingly, you see guys see the general get made. made. Um, naval units give promotions, give uh, combat experience for, uh, let's see if I can find the screen, for great admirals. Um, land units and air units give um, combat experience for great general progress. If you wanted to know that, just some minutiae, right? All right. And let's take our last fighter here. We have a jet fighter. Let's use uh, dogfighting again. And let's air sweep here. 
And finally, we get the the air patrol with your uh, the air patrol with your jet fighter encountered no resistance. And what this means is they're out of interceptions on that square. Now they could, after in a simultaneous game, after I've made that movement, they could move another mobile SAM in. Like so, if a mobile SAM showed up right there right now, I would know that they have another interception available. But they could move mobile SAMs here, and I wouldn't know. But that's basically when you get that message. That is basically as safe as you're ever going to be to do a bombing run. All right. So let's go ahead and bomb. No resistance. We actually got to do damage to him. Fantastic. All right. Cool. So that's the basic, right? Like, how do you get? How do you actually get to a place where you can safely bomb? Now, if we did this again and we did it where in case we couldn't safely bomb, let's just walk through that. We can go do that. We'll show you what happens if you don't deal with the interceptions. And we just need to get rid of this turn and get rid of that turn. Okay. Um. All right. So if we hadn't done that, let's say we had just decided to bomb here with our bomber, we're going to run into this message. Your Great War bomber bombarded an enemy mechanized infantry, 95 damage. And you can, clear, you can clearly see the mechanized infantry didn't take 95 damage. All units in uh, Civ 5, um, what are we in, uh, Brave New World, have 100 health, So, you, except cities which have 200. You can see that this unit did not take 95 damage. What took 95 damage was our Great War bomber here. It took 95 damage. And it took 95 damage because it triggered an interception. The fact that it's alive at all means it probably didn't trigger one of these fighters. The fact that it's alive at all means it probably triggered one of these mobile SAMs, and the mobile SAM then uses its combat strength against the against the, the bomber. And because it does its damage before the bomber does its damage, the bomber does extremely reduced damage to the target it was attacking. So if you look, we did something like uh, we did six damage to the mechanized infantry, and the mobile SAM did 95 damage to us, or 98 damage to us, excuse me. Um, something to note. That does, however, use up that mobile SAM's interception. So in a latch, uh, if you're very desperate, you can draw interceptions out and use them up by throwing bombers into them. But your bombers are going to take extreme amounts of damage, and they can get one shot. I mean, this was almost one shot from there. Um, so that's the type of message you're going to get if you haven't appropriately dealt with their, air with their intercepts. I don't recommend just repeatedly throwing your bombers into that, because if you do that, your bombers are going to die, and you're going to lose them very, very cost inefficiently. Um, all right, let's talk about a couple other small things. Um, the placement of your mobile SAMs matters, and the promotions that you take on your mobile SAMs matters when you're using them as air defense. Um, the higher the combat strength of your mobile SAMs or anti-aircraft guns or um, giant death robots, the, the more powerful of an intercept you're going to get. So for example, if I move this mobile SAM to here, this mobile SAM is on a hill, which is 25% combat strength. Uh, it's in a fort, which is 50% combat strength. If I leave it fortified for two turns, that's another 40% combat strength. I have double cover, which is 66% combat strength versus ranged attacks, of which air units count as ranged attacks. And it has double rough terrain promotion, which is 30% combat strength um, in rough terrain. And then additionally, it has uh, the 150 uh, versus um, uh, aircraft and helicopters, right? So the combat strength of this unit is going to be ridiculous. And you can kind of get some sense of that if you look over here, right? So the combat strength of this, um, this mobile SAM is 257 combat strength. And that is the combat strength that's going to apply against your bombers if you don't deal with this interception first. Which means your bomber, which is 65 combat strength, and might be, might be up to as high as 130 if it has all three um, anti-land promotions and is bombing something, is still dealing with something that's like 300 combat strength that it's attacking, right? So one of the things you can do to maximize the damage that your mobile SAMs are is to put them in forts, to put them on rough terrain, to take the appropriate promotions, either stacking cover or stacking the type of uh, terrain that they're going to be standing on, and that's going to make them do more damage to aircraft that are attacking them. Um, all right, what else? Uh, the combat strength of the unit you're attacking also factors in. So if I were to bomb this unit and the mobile SAM uh, was intercepting it, like what just happened, the combat strength of this unit also helps deal damage to the aircraft attacking it. Uh, what else? Let's see. Um, we talked about how all the fighters have air recon. That's something to remember. Um, that's the six, the six tile view around everything. Um, this is also, you're going to notice if you're ever getting intercepted by destroyers or missile cruisers, you're not going to take a lot of damage for the same reason that you do take a lot of damage from the mobile SAMs and interceptors because the bonuses are just a lot better on these units than those units. Um, talked about medic promotions. We talked a little bit about hotkeys. Uh, Alt-S for air sweep, S for strike, Alt-R for rebase. Um, 
We talked a little bit about mid-turn intercepts. If you're playing simultaneous play, don't do this. Don't be a dickhead. Um, if you if you do, just let's say you had a fighter sitting in here on defense and you didn't remember till halfway through your turn that he's there and you want to turn him on intercept, that's reasonable. That happens to people. Turn him on intercept and type in chat mid-turn intercept so that your opponent didn't just spend all that time air sweeping you in a, in a mechanic that is designed to be turn-based and then you have an intercept show up in the middle of the turn that he can't know about. So don't be a dick. If you're, gonna, if you're going to play the air game, try to play it in a way that's remotely fair. Um, on the flip side, a little bit more of a gray area. Like, let's say that last turn you created a, uh, a mobile Sam in your, the city of Mecca, and midway through a turn you move him down there uh, through your railroad system and he gets down there and play. Uh, that's a little bit more of a gray area. His intercept is going to be active for that turn, but whether or not you need to actually tell someone that, eh, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a little bit more of a fair game. That's more of a fair play mechanic than, uh, than uh, the mid-turn intercept turning on intercept midway through the turn. Um, but maybe tell them anyways that you're moving AA units around or something like that. Um, same with carriers. Carriers may be a little bit less part of the benefit of a carrier is you can keep it way in the back that they don't know about and then move it in. So, But it's still kind of sneaky play, like if you're deliberately uh, provoking midterm intercepts that they've already air swept for, because there's no real way to counter that from the attacker's position. So some of that's going to be uh, players being good sports in that. A um, couple other small things to talk about. Um, the Stealth Bomber is immune to intercepts entirely. Um, this Evasion 100 here, the number doesn't really seem to matter. Um, evasion 100 trumps all levels of interception. Maybe if it was Evasion 50, then only 50% of the time it would evade, but I'm not even sure that would be true. Um, right now, Stealth Bombers are totally immune to interceptions, so it doesn't matter how many intercepts they have, and I can demonstrate that. If I am to attack this, I can just attack the guy. Um, I took, very, I took damage, but that's just the counterattack damage from the unit being hit. That's just how air units work. But I took no interception damage. No planes will ever fly out. No amount of AA guns will be useful for that. However, if I attack um, with one of my if I attack with my stealth bomber on the um, the mobile SAM, the mobile SAM still gets that 150% bonus versus bomber units that you can see just above the mobile SAM portrait. That that defensive bonus that it gets versus air units is always going to be true for mobile SAMs. This is why in the late game, mobile SAMs become the premier blocker unit to deal with stealth bombers. They don't really hurt stealth bombers too much, but they're the unit with the most amount of hit points to uh, absorb stealth bomber shots. Um, let's see, a couple other things. Um, there is a promotion called Evasion. It's really, it's named in such a way as to be a bit of a pain. Um, it does not give the same evasion that Stealth Bombers has. It actually does a totally different mechanic. Let's see if we can find one of the ones we're from, uh, that's available. Uh, okay, yeah, it's available here. So Evasion is available after two levels of either Bombardment or two levels of Siege. That's when you can get Evasion. Evasion does exactly what it says it does. It reduces, well, kind of. <laughs> no, I take that back. It does mostly what it says it does. It does reduce the damage taken from interceptions. So unlike the Stealth Bomber, which doesn't get intercepted at all because it has 100% evasion, the promotion evasion actually just reduces the damage that uh, interceptions do to you. So let's say you didn't have enough uh, fighters to sweep away all their interceptions and you had to bomb into that. If you have to bomb into intercepts, it'd be really nice to have the promotion evasion because it means your, your bomber is much more likely to survive that encounter. Um, it's not actually a 50% damage reduction because even if it does exactly what it says it does and reduces the damage from interception by 50%, the damage your bomber takes is not totally from interception. Part of the damage it takes is the actual attacking the unit. Um, so it doesn't reduce the damage your bomber takes from attacking the unit at all, um, but it does reduce the damage your bomber takes from that interception on top of that. So it tended, when I was testing it, I tested it like 10 times in a couple different conditions. It seemed to be about a 33% uh, damage reduction around that for the units I was bombing, which gives you a sense of the proportion of the intercept damage versus the proportion of the unit damage, but that was probably specific to the types of the bomber I was using and the unit defending. So the mileage you're going to get on that is going to vary. It's never going to be as good as 50%, um, just FYI. Uh, what else? Um, there is another kind of bizarre mechanic that works with uh, bombing and intercept, uh, land-based or uh, water-based interception, and that is that unit cannot intercept for itself. And this is kind of a weird one. So if I were to take a bomber, which is not immune to interception, and bomb this unit right there, um, and let's pretend for a second this city didn't exist and this mobile SAM didn't exist. Yes, the unit is going to get the 150% combat bonus versus the bomber type of unit, but it's not also going to get an in interception bonus. So all I'm going to be doing with here is a uh, high 
uh, unit strength ability as opposed to also getting an intercept on top of that. Now, that's going to be only helpful in a very few specific circumstances. Basically, if you're bombing an isolated missile cruiser or an isolated mobile SAM, uh, then that you're going to get you're going to be able to not worry about inter not not worry about drawing the interceptions away from that because the only interception available is its own intercept and it can't intercept to protect itself. God alone knows why that is the mechanic, but that is the mechanic. Uh, all right. Other than that, I think we've about covered it. Um, we've gotten through quite a lot of the uh, the rules here. Oh, there is one other one I want to go into. Just remembered. Um, you can. You can use nuclear missiles and atomic bombs. Um, if atomic bombs do 100 damage to the tile they land on, and then they do less damage in a radius around them up to two squares. So bombers are like any other unit. They have 100 health. If you put an atomic bomb directly on a city with a stack of bombers, all the bombers take 100 damage and the bombers die. If there's a bomb shelter in that city, um, the bombers take 75% reduced damage, so they only take 25 damage. But if some of the bombers are low enough health points, if they're at 25 health or less from uh, previous attacks, they'll die still. And if you put four atomic bombs on the same turn on a city with a bomb shelter, the bombers each take 25 damage per bomb. So they will die because they'll take 100 damage that way. Um, same with nuclear missiles, except nuclear missiles, their radius is different. Uh, nuclear missiles kill everything inside, uh, on not only on their blast point, but also on a two-tile radius. So everything in that radius takes 100 damage when a nuclear missile lands, and that will kill um, bombers and fighters or any other aircraft stationed there if they don't have a bomb shelter. They do have a bomb shelter, the same rules as atomic bombs apply there. They're going to take 75% reduced damage, so they're going to take 25 per nuclear missile. So it is still possible to kill stacks of bombers or stealth bombers in a city that has a bomb shelter, you just have to use four atomic bombs or four nuclear missiles, depending on what you're doing. Um, barring this, have we got through everything I wanted to get through here? Uh, let's hope so, because uh, I tire, <laughs> I get bored in these games sometimes of seeing players uh, throwing their bombers away or being unable to deal with my bombers, not totally aware of how to counter them. Uh, so now you ought to know, just as a quick, you know, what should I take home? TLDR, didn't really want to watch the video. Um, bombers are countered by interceptions. There are land-based air-based and sea-based interceptions. Each of those units have specific rules that apply only to them. Um, the general rule of thumb is the, uh, the air-based units are the strongest in terms of actually killing uh, bombers, um, but the land-based units are easier to spam and get into position and have more of a utility rule, uh, role versus other units. Um, Promotion-wise, um, if you're promoting to defend against air on land units, promote for the best defenses available for that unit in terms of the tiles it's on. If you're promoting to defend against air units from an air perspective, um, interception promotions only uh, affect the damage you deal to bombers. They do not affect the damage that you deal to sweeping fighters. So uh, there is no great one for that. Air repair is the priority pickup for bombers. It's actually kind of the priority pickup for fighters too. I caution you to be very careful with, there's a promotion in the fighter tree called, uh, let's see if we can find it, yeah, called Sortie here, which gives your fighter an extra, uh, an extra interception per turn. Be very careful with that. Uh, yes, it's really good for screwing up people's ability to count the number of intercepts you have, but it also means your fighter takes a lot of damage every single turn. And what can happen is your fighter takes damage. Uh, I guess we didn't talk about that. Let's talk about that briefly. If your fighter is on intercept and it doesn't have to intercept that turn and it's wounded, it will heal. Um, and I think actually it may even it may even heal if it does intercept. So even if it does have to intercept that turn, if it's on intercept, it will heal at the end of your turn. So it will get its, it gets its health points back. But it auto defaults to intercept on the next turn too. So if you turned it on intercept and if it intercepted or even if it, or it didn't intercept, it's going to be on intercept for the beginning of next turn as well. And if your opponent, and if you have sortie, which is the double intercept, and your opponent is just flying um, uh, air sweeps into you over and over again, you can it, it can get damaged on your last turn, and then the turn rolls over, the next turn happens, it heals a little bit, and then your opponent throws two more air sweeps into it, and it blows up because you're not paying attention to it, and it takes a ton of damage. So it takes it takes double damage by by being a double intercept every single turn. So be careful with that. If you're if you have a unit, you want to turn off intercept. So if you've turned it on intercept and it defaults to intercept, and it will sit there forever and will blow up if it if it gets enough intercepts run into it um, over enough turns. The way to get it out of there, you can either rebase it, which will cancel the interception, or you can wake the unit up here. And once it's awake, just have it heal and not 
uh, and not intercept. So intercept defaults, it, when you're intercepting, it will heal on its own, but if you don't want it to intercept at all and just heal, wake it up and turn it on heal, and that will help it uh, not die to repeated air sweeps. All right, I think we finally are to the place where I wanted to be, where I wanted to talk through pretty much everything I can think of about the air game here. Um, and hopefully this will help you guys when you're getting into the late game, dealing with your opponent's uh, bombers or bringing your own bombers into play in a way that doesn't get them blown up. Because it's, it's very easy if you don't know what you're doing to just accidentally run into enemy intercepts. And enemy intercepts are extremely punishing. They almost always one-shot your uh, bombers. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And uh, if you liked it, hit the follow button. And I will see you all soon. Cheers. Filthy out.